What person did you watch turn into something they were not? I had a best friend who was honestly one of the nicest people on the planet, but due to depression and peer pressure from toxic people, she began shoplifting and getting into drugs. She stopped caring about people and stopped doing such risky things that I couldn't even hang out with her without feeling unsafe. She ended up getting me in so much trouble one time, that her mom, who considered me another daughter, told me that we had to separate to protect me from harm and trouble. I miss her family cause they really were another family to me, but she refused to take responsibility and continued being put in dangerous situations. I'm really glad her mom looked out for you. I'm sure that was incredibly hard for her as well as you. I have a friend from my childhood whose parents really went down the wrong path. I played sports with him and was in school with him from age 3 to graduation. His dad was always his biggest supporter and always sat next to my parents at every game. He was seriously such a nice guy. When we got into high school this kid's house was the hangout. Nobody knocked and at any given time there would be 5-10 kids hanging out there. In my 4 years of high school I watched his dad go from a fun loving easy going dude who loved his kids, to a guy who steals and robs to get his hands on any drug he could put into his body. We took in my friend to live with us when his dad skipped bail and was the subject of a statewide manhunt. It got to the point where he was doing drugs in the house with his oldest son. Seriously one of the saddest things I've ever seen. After my tight laced, pearl wearing great aunt had a stroke. She turned into a foul mouthed, swearing sailor. So sad, yet so flippin' hilarious. One of my classmates grew up and decided he was going to be a cowboy. Hat, boots, occasionally chaps, which is fine. Except having grown up with him I can pretty safely say he's never worked or lived on any type of farm or ranch and I'm pretty sure he's never even ridden a horse. We are from a very small town and he didn't associate with the horse. He was the emo punk kid, and everyone liked him for it. He was considering super cool. Now he's a fake cowboy, and most of his hometown friends actually do farm or ranch. And we all know that he doesn't. I don't get it, but it's embarrassing watching him throw around country jargon that doesn't make sense. I don't know why he's trying so hard and I don't know where this came from. Me when I played RDR2. One of my best friends from childhood ended up with schizophrenia. I watched him turn from a killer musician loving friend and trendsetter into a delusional paranoid that refused to take psych meds but self medicated with alcohol. Same with my brother. He was a super gifted engineer and a nice, fun loving guy, and treated schizophrenia turned him into a paranoid, arrogant, masochistic butthole. I will never forget the first time I interacted like him after the change. It really felt like my brother died and complete dickhead was left behind. I feel so bad for him but he is so hard to be around or try to help. And former high school friend with 80-85ish percent average in class, turned into a hell's angels in his 20s or 30s, murdered people, then died by homicide. Those events took place a very long, long time ago. I didn't know they were actually criminals. I always thought they were more like divorced dads going through midlife crisis. Some of them look like really cool people. My mom. She went from your average stay at home denim jacket wearing Canadian mother who loved coffee and angel statues and would listen to upbeat optimistic songs like walking on sunshine and don't stop thinking about tomorrow and turned into an alcoholic leather jacket hoarder that partied every day of the week and collected band and be a memorabilia and only ever listened to music about drinking. Fricking and being on drugs when she met my stepdad when I was 11. Things went from her taking care of me and parenting me, to me having to grow up real fast so I could take care of her and parent myself. Oddly enough though the pandemic has turned her around again. Being in quarantine and not being able to have 20 people over every night has made her desire to drink flatline and also given her plenty of time to go through and clean out her house. I'm proud of her right now, but I'm also worried that she'll wind up reverting as soon as COVID's over and she can see her friends again. All I can do is hope that her progress will stick. Wishing the best for you and your mom. Alcohol can be so dang destructive. Always been proud of my work ethic. I'm usually upfront, hardworking and hate gossip. I joined a large not-for-profit 22 months ago. The culture at the time was amazing but 2 months in there was a complete leadership restructure. All the way down to my manager. The new management chain all knew each other from another not-for-profit that the new CEO had led. 
he had deliberately brought everyone over to our much larger organization, firing existing dedicated staff and replacing with incompetent fools. The whole culture changed. Overnight it became bitchy and toxic. Common practice became to blame all shortfalls on either A, the former leadership or B, the current board of directors, who were trying to maintain the former positive culture. If you didn't be about those groups you became persona non grata in the eyes of leadership. I watched myself join them over 4 months. I trashed my former manager, the kindest, most gentle man you've ever worked for who gave me a shot there. I trashed the former general counsel. An amazing woman who sacrificed a 7 figure salary in a large law firm to come and support our charity. Eventually I realized that I didn't like who I became and I started standing up for it. I called it unprofessional when the bitching started and I refused to engage. 3 months later I got fired. Management and their collaborators and my team conspired to fire me because I was the source of a toxic culture. Now 3 months on I am working in a new company. I am super wary about fraternizing with any colleague. But I can at least hold my head up high. I also called my former manager and the former general counsel, owner up to my pet and everything and told them what happened. I feel honestly blessed that they both forgave me. We all get lost sometimes. You're good people. My mom's cousin. She's passed on now, but there was a time when she was so fun loving, happy, and genuinely confident. Then, after about 20 years together, her long term boyfriend had what I now think was a midlife crisis. He was in his 50s hanging out with women 25 to 30 years younger than him, and making it really obvious he was attracted to them. She wanted to keep his attention, so she grew her hair out, wore more suggestive clothing, and developed both an eating disorder and a pill addiction. She was wearing clothes made for 5 year old girls. Eventually, her problems got so out of control that her boyfriend kicked her out. She got into a car wreck that completely totaled her car, and she overdosed twice on my sister's medication in my home. My dad let her rent my grandpa's old house from him, and ended up having to kick her out because she was so high on pills that she left food cooking far too long on the stove and almost burned the house down. It didn't help that her other cousins constantly yelled at her and treated her like a child. At the time all this happened, I was a little too young to understand emotional trauma, and I spent a lot of time angry at her for letting her life get so out of control. I now feel really bad. But I'm thankful her last couple of years were lived happily with her son in another state and she got back to a healthy weight. When my nan, who half raised me, got dementia it was a horrific sight. Mostly bedridden she had no grasp on reality. This fierce, firecracker of a woman whose worst fear was to lose her mind. It happened and it happened in spectacular fashion. The most disturbing thing about it to me was how cruel she could be. She said terrible, unforgivable things to all of us at various points while she still knew who we were. We understood it wasn't her. My god. She was the kindest woman in the world. But it was still painful. Weirdly she came back a little cognitively in her last week. Her last words to me were hello little one. I love you. You look beautiful. Then as I was leaving she said to my aunt quick. Laura's going to miss the bus to school. Regressed a decade or two there nan. But hey, that's okay. It was the first time she'd said my name in two years. I wish I could've stayed with her. We knew she had days, if that. But it was complicated. My mum was sick and her grief overwhelmed her. She couldn't handle it and I wasn't going to leave mum alone. So I walked away from the house I grew up in and the woman who was basically my dad. For the last time, walking away was the hardest thing I've ever done. Nine years later the whole thing is still so painful. I would never recommend home caring someone with dementia Parkinson's. It was good Nan got to die at home but I know she'd trade that if she knew what caring for her did to the family. She needed nurses and doctors and care from those whose hearts weren't broken. I miss her so freaking much. TLDR. Nan who half raised me had dementia. My story is like millions probably. Dementia and Parkinson's is a goddamn nightmare. My family is currently dealing with this. We spent almost a year with people staying with her and her dying husband every night. It finally got to be way too much for everyone and we have nurses for them now. It's so freaking hard. At school there was a lad. He was a nice guy, but school was not for him. He was the class joker and kept us entertained. He pulled some wild or crazy stunts and was uncontrollable. The teachers hated him and he was often in trouble and being suspended. 
Towards the end of schooling he was never in and kind of dropped out. Like I said he was a nice lad, not a bully. Plus his home life was not very good at all. We all thought that he would not amount to much. Fast forward 10 years. He has a nice family, married with two children, lives in a nice house in a decent area, runs his own business which looks to be doing very well and he is very well respected in the community. Sadly this year he was in a car accident and died. Wow that came out of nowhere. I've watched all three of my older brothers become addicted to drugs and alcohol. The oldest has now been clean for many, many years. But when he was using he'd be violent and scary. The middle just recently fell off the wagon and went from being a hard worker to being fired from his job. Out all hours of the night, and just acting like a madman. The third is now on his third wife. He abandoned his first wife and their kids for his mistress and never paid child support. Rarely contacts us and if he does he called mom the n word. We're white. And other names. My dad was a surgeon doctor who was a partner in his very well respected practice. He was sought out for consultations by pharmaceutical companies all over the world and remains highly respected in his field. On top of this he was always very put together. Clean shaven. Buttoned up. To the point where my mom's friends asked if he was metrosexual back when they met. After retirement he got into farming and fishing. Spends all day every day working on his plants or boat and is almost always wearing stained clothes. He's still incredibly intelligent and well spoken but omg is it funny to see this surgeon who was always so put together and urbane become an old farmer. Honestly he sounds like a badass. From one type of badass to another. My whole life. My mum was a stay at home mum. She never worked at all. Even though my family honestly needed the extra income. Most days she won't even do household chores. Just sit around watching TV or go shopping. Whenever my dad hinted at her getting a job she would claim nothing will get done around the house. I need to stay at home to cook and clean. Then my parents decided to move to a small town. And my dad couldn't find work. And my mum did an online course and found a job straight away. And now she works full time. I'm so proud of her. Her first full time job at age 50 and she absolutely loves it. One of the few positive responses here. This is great. Basic training. We all had our head shaved. Wore uniform. Etc. Sweetest guy in the squadron. Super nice. Thoughtful. Soft spoken. First day wearing civvies. Civilian clothes. Dude walks out with black lipstick. Spike dog collar. And some angry shirt. Day I realize that you can't judge a book by its cover. That was a pretty common experience in the army. Dudes would become BFFs in basic training. Then graduation rolls around and one dude is in goth gear. Another in wranglers and a cowboy hat. And another in an oversized jersey and flat build cap. Then they all walk away. In step with each other. There was a guy I went to high school with who moved before sophomore year. He was always on top of his grades. Didn't slack off. Showed enthusiasm. And tried to befriend others. He had some moments when he wasn't in the best moods, but a decent guy nonetheless. That was until a couple weeks before high school graduation, when he committed two home invasions within a month with two other people. With all the charges against him, I'll probably be retired by the time he is released from jail, assuming his sentence doesn't get shortened. My ex-girlfriend and I started our relationship talking about everything, and really communicating well. She was so thoughtful and considerate, and did bring things up in this beautifully calm and productive way that I just loved. Apparently, I freaked up in March, but she didn't tell me till May. I apologized right when she told me, but even when we talked about the same issue again over the months she never told me how angry and resentful she still was about it. I thought I was going crazy at one point. Because I couldn't tell her something hurt my feelings without getting a novel about how really it was my fault for example. When she was down to make plans with my brother and I. But just me she was too tired. I got something similar from an ex. We were best friends for a couple years. Amazing partners for months. And he never told me there was a problem. Just shut off his empathy for me one day and I couldn't understand or bring it back. I hope you're doing better now. That's really rough. My roommate, when he first came in, he seemed nice and everything. Turned out he was a manipulative liar who played victim and stabbed all of my roommates and I in the back and talked to us like we were stupid. He's leaving tomorrow and I'm really glad. 
For a second I thought he literally stabbed all your roommates. Someone said they wanted a positive and I would like to use myself as an example. In elementary and middle school, I used to cry every day because I was picked on. I hated my life. I was mean and sarcastic to my family. Hold up on my room. By high school, I kind of became a preppy. B. I looked down on a lot of people. Made fun of a lot of people. People even told me that their friends thought I was stuck up. And then I, I would laugh because their friends were losers anyways. By the time I got to college, I realized I wasn't better than everyone else and how average I really was. I realized I waa treating people the way I was treated in middle school because it made me feel good about myself. College was very humbling for me. I started not caring what people thought of me and, conversely, not judging others around me like I used to. I started smiling more at people I knew or strangers. This simple act started to help change my attitude even more. People started telling me that I was nice and friendly. It's been years, and I will always be a work on progress as I continue to grow and learn. But I've let a lot of hung ups go to become kinder, friendlier, helpful, and empathetic. Again, work in progress. I'm sorry if this sounds conceited, but seeing who I was on high school to who I am now is really a shift I have seen in myself. Good for you. Self reflection is so powerful. Grew up with my best friend, whose mom was a rage addict, swearing up and down that she'd never turn into her mom. But at the end of high school, she moved away and started being around the wrong kinds of people. I watched her fall into a dark spiral of drug abuse, including H. It hurt to see. It's hard when that's your role model. My volleyball teammate was a nice, funny, cheerful dude before he became TikTok famous. Now it seems like he is out of touch with everyone he knew before and seems so fake and artificial. Seems like the thousands of online girls that stan him are all he cares about anymore. All through elementary up to 8th grade I was best friends with my cousin. She has had a super horrible life and never really has had anyone to look out for her so I always felt like I should be there for her if she needed anything needless to say me and her were really close. However in 8th grade a new girl moved to my school and she started hanging out with my cousin. Before I knew it my cousin started smoking and drinking and dating horrible guys that were on drugs and stuff. I kept trying to be there for her and help her do the right thing but she stopped being nice to me and started being super hateful and rude to me. One day I found out she had started dating a guy that had dumped her and treated her horribly before and I was trying to talk to her about it and she snapped at me so I literally said frick it, I'm done and walked away from her. I had to watch someone I was so close to we were pretty much sisters go from being a decent kid who was funny and kind and who knew not to get into drugs and things like that go to being a horrible moody jerk all of the time. I still get upset about it to this day. Goes to show how scary it must be as a parent hoping your kids don't fall in with the wrong friends at school. So many examples in this thread just boiling down to good, stable, wholesome kid randomly gets befriended by some little punk and ruins their life while their loved ones look on helplessly and ignored. Sheer luck sometimes. My ex GF Kaylee, she was so shy and adorable. She'd throw parties at her parents' place when we were teens and hide from all the action in a bedroom. We only dated for a few weeks. She was so difficult to understand and get through to. I figured I just wasn't the right person for her. This past January, she died of a rage overdose. Age 26. Her older brother was a piece of crap who was always into drugs. Selling guns on the street. Everything a bad influence could possibly do. He was a freaking butthole who got her into drugs that eventually killed her. He was giving her pills when she was like 15. I miss you, Kaylee. A lot of people do. Be safe up there. My heart bro. The man from my last relationship. He's the absolute love of my entire life and drugs ruined what we had completely. He started using the needle and got so hooked on it that he was stealing used needles from people's houses on multiple different occasions. We combusted into strangers after learning he knowingly used a dirty needle previously used by someone who is HIV and Hep C positive. Bro, that's a true addiction if he needs his fix so bad, he's willing to risk AIDS for it. There was this group of friends. Back in primary school they made fun of me so I hated going to school. I hated seeing them every day. I hated being in their presence. They always seem like they are constantly just there to get me for no good reason. 
I was a fat obese kid and a nerd at that so easy target I suppose. Never had any girlfriend or even a friend I could really have as backup to cushion the insults that came my way. I was having a rather rough primary school experience. Then came high school where me including that group of friends end up being classmates. At first it was weird being in the same class as the people I hated for 6 years of my life but I just went with it cause I can't really change classes can I? Somehow along the lines of being classmates, that group of friends became nice and rather fun to talk to. Well I wouldn't say nice cause insults is still being thrown to me but I realize after being friends with them that's just how they really roll. They throw insults and rude comments to one another and they just laugh it off. Mind you at that time I was 13 so I've never seen this kind of behavior so it was odd for me yet refreshing to see a person to willingly take an insult without feeling down instead laughs about it. Fast forward a little and I'm 23 now and we're still best buds till today. I never thought the people I hated for 6 years of my life end up being my best buds. Those 6 years of being bullied went down the drain and all of it was replaced with 10 years of pure friendship. A friendship I didn't ask for but a friendship I know I needed. Heck at this point I wouldn't even call this relationship a friendship instead more like family. I can't even imagine living my life without one of them. Even right now one of them is constantly berating me about writing this comment while we're hanging out cause no phones during hangouts is our rule but I saw the post and it reminded me of that moment that led me here so decided to pour out a little. Feeling into it to show sometimes not everyone is bad. If you open up a little bit you might just see who they really are and you might just like what you see. That is all from me. Lights out for now. It's quality time with some quality company. Hope all of you have someone like how I have this crazy group I call friends. Hey good for y'all. Nice to see something wholesome in this thread. My bestie started dating an Instagram influencer that's 12 years his junior and now he's a vegan fitness coach. Definitely not the future I had envisioned for him but the heart wants what the heart wants. When the dong is hard the heart don't listen. An enemy from school. I hated this girl because she always acted like she deserved the world. She always gossiped about her own friends and said mean things about them. Her friends were all superficial and had no shame. They used each other for clout and they knew it. This girl used this poor boy to her fancy and dumped him. Like she was despicable. Oh gosh I hated her so much. I moved to another school but I still stayed in touch with friends from my previous school. I'm this person who really does not give a crap if I don't like you. I don't care if you're going well or bad. To me you don't exist. So I had no idea what happened to her until I met her once outside of a play I was going to go watch with my college friends. She hugged me like we actually liked each other but then we reconnected after the play. We put for dinner with my friends and I dropped her at home. We had a heart to heart about what happened in her life and how she changed for the better. She is a journalist now and she volunteers at the animal shelter every weekend. She helped me adopt my dog. She really did turn around. I mean in hindsight I don't think she was that bad in school. She was just an awkward teenager. I didn't recognize that because I was one too. This is a good positive story. My beer loving. Weed smoking. Pierced. Pole dancing friend with a sailor's dictionary. A witch's clothing and a loud opinion on everything. Actually met her at a job one day. In office attire and all. She was a whole other person there. I'm also a whole other person when I'm at work. A friend of mine recently helped me get a job at the company he works at, and now I'm wondering if he kinda has the same experience with me, just the other way around. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.